uh, this is Enrique and this is Easy Things to Draw. I'm going to go over how I did this. This is a this is the finished uh, piece and I did this on Photoshop CS7 uh, using a Wacom tablet. Um, I did this for Storybird.com. So I'm going to start out this video by, I already have the undersketch done. The undersketch meaning is just a scribbly mess of like the vague idea. I wanted a monsters under the bed kind of feel for this. I mean feel. The whole story is going to be monsters under the bed. And I wanted it to be standalone. I didn't want a background image. I wanted it more like a, maybe like a segment of a, of a kid's book, but with no background. Um, so I wanted the kid kind of asleep there, and you know, it's kind of this looming threat, but it's not actually too looming. You know, he's kind of friendly looking, uh, maybe like very similar to Monsters Inc., where it's kind of his job to do this or something. So what I'm doing is I'm using layers. Uh, if you don't know what this is like I said it, I, well, I'll recap it's obviously it's Photoshop Adobe Photoshop and I think the way they do it now is they do it on a monthly service as opposed to just getting the regular program uh, I can put that in the link in the description if you are interested in getting Photoshop Photoshop's like one of the standard 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 programs like almost every concept artist I know illustrator uses uh, Photoshop to paint with or do line art uh, they also use illustrator uh, which is also an Adobe program. Uh, another thing is uh, the Wacom tablet. I, I can't imagine doing this thing in mouse, like using the mouse. It's just too wiggly. It's too weird. You have to do, use a Wacom tablet, and I've talked about it in the past. I can also put that in the description uh, below. Uh, I use a Wacom, and I also use a Cintiq. Uh, Wacoms are not very expensive. You can get those cheapish. I think, like under 100 depending on what version. I have an Intuos 3 uh, Wacom. Uh, and I also have a uh, just a Cintiq that I don't really use too much, but the Cintiq's like a lot of money. Cintiq's like a thousand. I, I mean, it's good. I mean, if you want to, like, Cintiq is where you can draw on the screen. Like the screen is pressure sensitive. Uh, the Wacom is where you have a little tablet next to you, and you have to, you know, just kind of do that. So I'm going over here, and I think I have my line art decently tight, and I want to go into colors, and I'm going to put another layer on, and I usually put another layer and make it a uh, multiply layer. Or I will throw the color underneath the lines already. They're cleaned up lines. I'm doing this, and uh, this stuff is sped up, I believe, I believe like 500% speed up. I forgot exactly how long the entire process was. I'm coloring this in just to get a base color for him. Uh, I didn't want it to be red because the red would look too much like that Looney Tunes character, which is very similar. This is similar, uh, I guess, in my head, like Monster Inc. So I just pick blue I thought it was a nice color so when I uh, I will go over the exact functions of these in like another tutorial if you want but uh, like what I'm doing is like if you don't you know know what I'm doing uh, I I created that layer right and I created a color base on that by just selecting the layer and then I also am cutting stuff out here with the uh, excuse me sorry my phone just wigged out The phone just wigged out. Uh, I'm also uh, yeah. Uh, what else? And I'm trying to color in the kid here as well on another layer. I'm trying to change what type of layer it is. You can change what kind of layer you want. Uh, and then I threw I threw a um, I threw a gradation over the monster layer. And right here, I'm continuing to color the bedspread. I wanted it to, to be on the other end of the color uh, spectrum. I didn't want it to be bluish or anything cool, like cool colors. I wanted it to be uh, kind of hot colors, like him to be hot and the monster to be cold. So I'm just kind of picking in browns, oranges, uh, yellows, yellows for the bedpost. You know, the kid has a flesh color tone, which is, uh, you know, like a little reddish value I'm flipping the image to kind of see if there's any mistakes on it sorry about that I have my little recorder a screen recorder every now and then it'll pop up I'm changing the colors to kind of understand what I want 
right there from the lines. I'm picking the line. I'm trying to colorize the line of the monster. And I want it to make it blue, but then if it's totally blue, he won't pop up. Uh, so it's just, it's just a mess, kind of. <laughs> I'm throwing another layer. Uh, I'm trying to throw a gradation, which is just this big screen of like this black to white. I'm trying to see if that looks correct, and I didn't think it looked very correct. So instead, I just just basically colored in. I wanted to color in a shadow, like he's causing a shadow on him. And I'm just using a hard brush to do that. Uh, the white there is not really breeding, so I'm trying to make that look white, but under kind of a cool shadow. I'm sorry, a warm shadow. Even though realistically he should be causing a cool shadow, but I, I just wanted to make it warm. I'm going in here now, and I do this thing in a lot of, a lot of uh, line art, is after I'm done with the general colors, I go in and I try to fix them manually. I try to go in and try to like you know, like I said, these little bizarre like patches of white or where things should overlap, I will just go in there with a regular brush tool on another layer completely, just a layer on top of all of it, and I'll try to repair everything I can. Uh, continue to just kind of look at it. Uh, I think I'm pretty close to done. I wanted something to kind of frame the Im image. I wasn't sure. So I just wanted to put something to ground it, I mean. Uh, and so I'm going to put like a shadow. I was thinking of what I could do. With, with, I was thinking just throwing a layer and then blurring it out. Like a shape and then blurring it out. And it has to be underneath them. And the, since these are layers that are kind of see-through-y, I, I have to just go in there and manually cut it out. So I'm erasing out what I don't want present. So it looks like they're, they have some sort of ground to them. I was thinking about maybe a rug, but I just thought the shadow is simple enough. And I just put a, uh, a blur on the shadow. And that's pretty close to the end of this. Uh, thanks a lot, guys. I appreciate it. Um, I, if you wanted more, if you want more tutorials on really specific Photoshop things, let me know. I can probably start doing a bunch of those. Um, otherwise, thanks a lot for watching this demonstration. This is just a one, you know, one of many that I do. So thanks a lot, guys. I'll see you later.